brilliant example of why it really pays to know your uh, Burgundy geography is this. We are here at probably the greatest of the Premier Cru vineyards in Burgundy, certainly the greatest Premier Cru in Vaughan, uh, Le Malcansor. And we are right next to one of the greatest wines in the world, um, La Tache, the Grand Cru Monopole from Domaine Romney Conti. Now, if I'm standing over here, I'm going to be paying about £3,000 a bottle. If I'm standing over here, I'm going to be paying £250 a bottle for uh, Domaine de Monti and a little over £100 for Clos Frantin. So look at that. That's about uh, three metres difference between £3,000 a bottle and £250 to £100. So that is really all you need to know about what it worth paying you know paying to understand burgundy terroir and geography Morceau in Arbor. so it's a very nice parcels in uh, in Morceau. It's, it's a very very it's a beautiful UD in Morceau, in the top of uh, of the Morceau village uh, very close to the appellation uh, uh, genevrière and uh, and poriso uh, the situation is very nice because it's very it's a, it's a little bit colder than the than the bottom of uh, of the hide, and uh, the soil it's uh, just amazing of uh, of uh, of complexity. It's a red soil with a, a lot of clay, uh, with a very nice lime limestone. Um, so the the complexity, the balance of the soil, it's just perfect. I mean. Why? Um, so I was delighted. In, um, in 2018 to actually get a pass from Chasseur Premier Cru, Le Bon Dieu. Um, and it, it's a little parcel of white. And in the middle of that is a small amount of 90 year old Pinot vines. Um, I'm the only one that actually gets it. So it's my little water pole right. as well. And it just makes this very beautiful, um, it's quite rich. It's not necessarily the, the bright, light on its feet, crunchy, um, Chassin red that I was looking for initially, but Vignard will give you, um, you know, will give you what what, what they have. Um, so this wine is probably a bit more concentrated than um, than I was expecting. But this 90 year old vine, China production, um, and it still has this really lovely energy to it, some more blueberry fruit than um, than the, the brighter red spectrum. But I just um, I really love that um, it's not Chassin. The Saint Christophe from uh, Le Mimonti, which is it, which is a Marceau uh, village blend. Uh, it's a blend of two different cuvées. One of the best parts about it is that you have you have the the texture, you have a, a nice presence and weight to the to the wine, but yet you have an acidity and a, and a freshness to it that's very crisp, good tension, good persistence. So Fils Saint Claude La Perrière is one wine that I adore from the value it has. Uh, it's uh, when you, you think about Gevray and all those, the, the highest concentration of Grand Cru, all those premier Cru that are marvelous, you are just next door. So you don't have, should I say, the price of the Gevray, but you've got the proximity with something that will be more approachable. And Claude La Perrière is very peculiar. Uh, it's one single plot, Claude La Perrière, owned by the Joliot family, but Alain Servo, our winemaker, has uh, worked with uh, the owner to get the exclusivity of that, that part that we, we get, which is half of the harvest. We are the exclusive other producer of uh, Claude La Perrière. Uh, and uh, they've identified five different plots with different styles, so that we have an assemblage that gives really the representation of the Claude La Perrière. And something important is that in the Laval book or the monks that started the, uh, the vineyard ident identification in Burgundy, said that Claude La Perrière was, to, in their eyes, as valuable as Claude de Lambre or, or Claude de Tarn. <laughs> so, Genève, it's a plot in the north of Gervais, just in the middle of the, the hill. So, for me, it's quite... Um, it's a very good place because, for me, the, this place in the middle, near the Rue des Grands Cru, it's the best for the village because you are... it's a combination of the soil from the top and the lower part, so it's more, I think, uh, more representative of the what we can have in Jure. And in this past it was planted in 1953, so it started to be a little bit old, but 
we have a lot of melamine ash, so each time we have a very good concentration, uh, very high level of acidity and a lower level of sugar. So in this kind of vintage, when we harvest in end of October, August and the beginning of September, it's very good because we have the concentration, the maturity, and in the same time we have good acidity. So it's now we can test Jeuvre Chamberta Champagne 2019 and. Uh, this wine is uh, is in my heart because it was the dream of my grandfather to to have this wine in bottle. Uh, before uh, Champery was in blend with another uh, plot of Jeuvre Chamberta village, and uh, since 2013 I produce this wine separately. This wine is a beautiful terroir. Champery is a beautiful terroir because you have four five meters of clay just here. Not in the bottom of the village, not on the top, but in the middle. And it's not normal clay, it's uh, more red than brown clay. And maybe in this terroir you have more uh, iron. Iron can give to Champerrier saltness. Voilà. And um, about Champerrier, I, uh, I select only the most beautiful bunch to produce this wine. I produce under two barrels and five barrels maximum. Now standing in front of what we think is a really special under the radar hidden gem vineyard, and that is a Petit Bougeau. And um, I'm, I'm hiding this bin, so it's not very attractive, but if Clemence, if you come around and, and show the vineyard. So it's this little vineyard here, tucked up just on the side of uh, Clos Bougeau over here. So you've got Clos Bougeau behind the wall. So one mighty, mighty con crew. And then if you keep panning rounds, we have uh, the famous uh, Musigny from which is on the Chambon Musigny uh, side of the Appalachian. And if we keep coming around back to the vineyard, um, then you'll see this used to be the site of an old quarry, uh, hence the sort of escarpment. And then further over is um, Amaroz, another amazing uh, Chambon uh, crew vineyard. So it's a great little great little vineyard and um we we have a wonderful uh wine from it from um maison edouard de Launay. and uh you've got to check it out and we have uh, a beautiful aligoté which is coming from uh, a vineyard located on the other side of the hill just in front of the house uh, here in the haute côte de Nuit in burgundy so it's less than one kilometer away and it's a unique terroir made of uh, white uh, marl and limestone soil, which 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 works perfectly with uh, the the, the aligoté grape, and I have a part, I have a, a special uh, a special uh, feeling, a special uh, attraction for this wine, because it was planted by my old professor, my old teacher of enology at the University of Dijon a long time ago, called the Professor Feuilla. It now belongs to uh, his son. And we call this wine uh, La Vigne du Professeur Feuillard. It's a, it's a aligoté with a beautiful acidity, a beautiful freshness, and a little of saltiness at the end, and which is just beautiful for the, uh, for the vintage. Claude Zorme is really uh, important for the estate because it's the uh, uh, most important plot by the size. Uh, we own two hectares of this, uh, of this Premier Cru. So really, uh, Claude Zorme and, and Domaine Ligne Georges are really linked and it's uh, one of the reasons I, I really like uh, this wine. Um, it's a, a part north of Moray Saint Denis, where the subsoil is really closed uh, of the top, and, and we are uh, having vineyard in, in um, growing in in the main rock, uh, really rich in limestone, and it's always drive to wine, uh, not really open when young. But uh, with uh, all the characteristic of the uh, uh, Burgundy wine, able for a long, long aging. So uh, the Bas de Combe uh, is uh, located uh, just uh, the limit of uh, Von Romanet and Nuit Saint Georges. Uh, it's uh, surrounded by Von Romanet vineyards uh, like um, Les Réa on the east and uh, Von Romanet Les Chaumes Premier Cru on the north. And uh, just uh, on the slope on the west, you can find the Nuit Premier Cru uh, Les Boudeaux. And uh, so that's why in that vineyard uh, you can find uh, the finesse and the elegance of the Vaud Romanet character, plus the strength and um, a little bit more power coming from the Nuit Saint-Georges um, appellation. 
And uh, the good point is that this vineyard is uh, eight years old. So it produces a very small quantity with uh, very tiny berries, a lot of mirrorage. But um, this gives uh, a lot of perfumes, but uh, also the soil will give a very high uh, minerality. So the Batcombe is a very complete wine. You've got a bit of everything. Bone, bone is one of those regions that is really going to benefit a little bit from from the the vintages where you have warmer, drier climate situations. Uh, bone has heavier soils, going to hold on to moisture. For example, the Bone Grave. Bone Grave. It has a little bit of iron, a little bit of clay, and a little bit of limestone in it. It has a little bit of a meat fry characteristic. You've got multi layers to it, a little bit more textural, a little bit more generous, but yet a good persistence and a good acidity to it. Um, well, pretty much a crowd favorite from Marsalé on Combro. Marsalé, we are north of the Côte de Nuit, and with Marsalé, uh, the, the wines from Marsalé are a little underrated, uh, underestimated yet. They are very similar in terms of uh, style to Gervais Chambertin, but for a price which is much more affordable than Gervais Chambertin. Uh, our vineyard on Combro is located at the south of the appellation, not far from the Gervais Chambertin uh, wines, and it's full of, uh, of fruit with a nice acidity, a nice freshness, good tannin as well, uh, beautiful ripeness, actually. We popped down to uh, Mercure this morning to see Francois Racquier, and it's always a beautiful little spot to come and visit. I, I think, you know, the wines from the Chalonnet are hugely underrated and offer probably the best value you find in Burgundy. What's really interesting here is that they have been harvesting in August for the last five or six vintages. So for them, solar years are no problem. In fact, what Francois was saying is that the extra sun gives the wine that a uh, little bit more ripeness, that more that greater richness. Um, it means the acidity is slightly lower, but they've got good tannins. So the wines are achieving natural balance. And certainly everything we tasted with Francois, you know, the whites and the reds, they're beautiful, they're poised, they're succulent, very good focus, good tension, good concentration, and they're an amazing price too.